Alright, so we will start with the loincloth area and we'll start with the uh, uh, cloth or leather flaps up there. Um, as I said, it will be tank brown. We will add a bit of white uh, to our base mix to make it a bit more opaque and a bit more. Um, well, well it, it's uh, actually it's getting a bit pink, um, but that is not too bad. It's not like a very vi vibrant pink. It's more more um, terracotta tone. Um, as I don't really have um, the 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 best angle to to pull the brush, uh, I will just work with uh, different layers of paint to create the highlight. Mm -hmm. And just keep in mind where the light comes from. So. But uh, still brighter than the base color, but darker than the highlight. Okay, and now with uh, some uh, pure tank brown. We'll go back and increase the shadows. Also, we will give it a slight glaze over the whole surface to make it a bit vibrant, a bit more vibrant again. Mm. Yeah, the, the base color looked a little desaturated, especially on the black. And now the tank brown. Uh, Glaze gives it a lot of saturation. Plus that, um, again, the, the tank brown has a little um, sheen to it. Slight satin look, as you can actually see when he turns the miniature. So. Yeah, the, this color now is like I, like I wanted it to be. Mm. So, a very natural, desaturated leather red. Um, we'll just push the highlights on top a little bit more here. Yeah, the... yeah, it's, uh, it's a little flat right now. And actually, it also appears a little flatter than maybe usual um, because of the the sparkliness of the rest of the armor. You got all these little tiny highlights everywhere. You want to be consistent with that on your whole miniature. Use some black to to frame these little well rivets nails. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, for the lower, lower part of the loincloth, we will um, just place the figure differently on the cork so we have better access. Mm -hmm. So just pin the figure into, into one side of the, the cork uh, with one side of the foot. The rest is attached with blue tag. Yep. This way I can just turn them around. And just some black here. So the primer didn't catch the lower side here. Okay. So what was your plan for colors again? Um, Non-metal silver with a few uh, gold uh, plates mm -hmm. and a blue 
out of border. Okay. Mm, for the non-metal silver, we will mix some model color turquoise uh, with some black. And some white. And we start with a rather dark tone. You want, kind of want to keep the spaces between the scales um, in the dark base color. Yeah, exactly. I really uh, don't like painting the whole thing uh, first blue and then washing over it because uh, that the result is okay, but it can turn out quite messy, yeah. depending on how fine the scalp is here. The, these plates are quite articulated, but um, uh, still, this here is the safer way. Yeah, and you'll actually see a lot of painters um, not using washes that extensively. Um, maybe sometimes to find uh, details of a, of a face or something. Like I, I remember that uh, Fernando Ruiz does that. Um, we have this on the um, Random Encounter um, video that we've done with him. Um, but um, generally, as a, as a kind of more like a showcase painter, uh, we're trying to have as much control over the result as you want. And uh, that's why washes are not necessarily something we use a lot. Maybe in the end of a process to do something, but not in the beginning so much. Yeah. I guess it depends also a little bit on the painter. Yeah, and it really does depend on um, the texture on the model. And mm. Because when you have more texture, you can you can easily work with... Like hair or... or yeah, hair or... Fur, these kind of things. Or skin or something like that. Mm. Uh, leather, for example, is also nice with washes. Um, but yeah, for like shiny little metal plates. <laughs> I can already see that um, you left some of them a little darker. Those are the ones in the little fold there. Yeah. Yeah, we won't highlight those too much. Mm -hmm. mm. Now we will uh, try a load of brush on the, these small scales. This is a little bit, a little bit advanced. You see, there's a very, very small amount of white on the tip. You can see Ben doesn't pit, uh, paint with the absolute tip, so that not only white uh, is uh, transferred, but uh, a little bit with the area where the white and the base color are right next to each other. And also a little bit with the side of the brush, um, of course, which he has to do if he doesn't use the tip. And this way you always create a little bit of a... See, I, uh, But yeah, you can see it here. And this automatically creates a little blending right in that area of the separation of those two things. Problem is we cannot really do that with the the inner ones here. Yeah. So we just have to highlight those. Just classically, just the side. And it's a little warm in here, so like putting all these little tips of white on there, so <laughs> it's uh, drying very, very quickly. You can see the contrast already. I mean, there's still work to be done, but there's already a very nice overall effect there. Okay, I'm just a little bit black 
Mm. Just kind of outlining and separating. Yeah. Scales a little more, yeah. When it comes to highlights and shadows on something like this, um, because especially it's a um, curved area, um, you kind of want to create a flow of highlights. Um, so like the, the biggest highlights follow the, the outside that turns to light. And then the, the ones that kind of go behind a fold or something at a smaller highlight. Um, so it's not every scale is different. It just creates a certain yeah, aesthetic flow, I guess. Yep. Yes, that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, something uh, should be gold. So you're just glazing over it with... Uh, which one was it? Um, it's a mixture of... Um, Scruffles brown and tank brown. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty cool. Honestly, I just thought a moment ago, it's like, nah, I don't know about the gold, but but then again, you're the artist, and I'm just uh, just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, this is actually really nice. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's nice because it's it's adding quite a bit of interest. Yeah, uh, into that part. And you also have, uh, I mean, of course, it's a. It's an area, this, this, these scales, uh, but now you're actually introducing um, a uh, color um, contrast in this area as well, not just outside the area. And that's, I think it's pretty cool. Let's put some blue on the, f on the frame to see if we still need maybe, maybe a wash on the shadow or something like that, just to check the, the actual maximum contrast. So yeah, we're trying to highlight that just with the side of the brush because the, the frame here is quite raised, so it should, should be quite easy. I honestly have to say I really like those miniatures. I think they're really well done. Well, of course, not everybody agrees, but that's all right. <laughs> that's personal taste, I guess. I think uh, for a gamer, they're nice. Uh, again, I think they're a little bit too, too big. They could have been a little smaller. But uh, I think also for a painter, they're really nice. They are actually offer a lot. Yeah, they offer quite quite a bit in there. Since they're big, I think it's it's also good if you start painting with those. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the surfaces are easy and, and nice to approach. Actually, it might be interesting to, to find out if that was something that Games Workshop had in mind. I mean, clearly the Age of Sigmar is uh, is not targeted at the 15-year hardcore tournament player. Uh, I think uh, the rules will just make sure that this is not the case. But uh, I, honestly, I think it's not, not a bad approach. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice game to pick up as uh, your first, uh, first tabletop game. Um, the quality of the plastic is, as always, I mean, Games Workshop just knows how to do plastic, for sure. Um, and maybe it's even what you just said is, is uh, correct that uh, the miniatures are a little bigger just to make them easier to paint. It's possible. Yeah. You would hope that people th at Games Workshop think about all of these things. <laughs> I know that all of the designers do, but. Yeah, this looks really cool. Yeah. Really happy with the with the, also with the color combination. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the uh, decision to make that red. Um, yeah. Blue would have been too much. Yeah, this way it looks a bit more natural and a bit, a bit more interesting also because um, we have to use the tank brown on on the whole model, so it's not really adding another color, but. Uh, it's very harmonious. Yeah. yeah. 
And you also have this on the shaft of this, of this, or the, the what's it called, the, the sheath of the sword. Where you stick your sword in. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll, turn, that'll turn red, all right. <laughs> um, and I guess we'll do the, the um, handle of the of the uh, hammer. Is it going to be blue or also red? Mm, it's going to be also red. Yeah, I think it makes um, sense. Same, same tone. Uh, here, I just decided to use some blue because of the red down here. And right. I didn't want to make it all the same color. Mm-hmm. Um, we will start with the... Um, in the, in the next part, we will start with the non-metal uh, hammerhead. Okay. Because this here is also a very interesting shape. Yes, um, it is. The little curve on the front yeah. is just awesome, yeah. All right. Whoever well, designed that little curve, good job. <laughs> okay, we'll do that in the next part. <laughs> right.